So this is the telescopic cascode op amp. Now as usual to calculate the noise we bias the output with the quiescent value of the output. Okay. Then while calculating the noise the inputs are also biased at the common mode voltage and the differential input is set to 0. Okay. Now what we need to do is to analyze the noise from each component. As usual we go through every component, add the corresponding noise current to that component and see what happens to the output current. Okay. Firstly, let me add a noise current to M0. What will be the output current because of this? It just splits equally into I and 0 by 2 on each side and from here it gets mirrored to this side also. Okay. Now, this is a common thing that we are by now familiar. The common mode input that is anything connected to the tail current appears in the common mode and will not appear in the final output. Okay. So, the contribution of uh, M0 is 0. What about M1? I have a noise current IN1. What happens to this? How much current will flow to the output? What will be the incremental current here and what will be the incremental current here and here? How do we analyze this? We will do this a couple of times again just to get some practice, but uh, this type of thing should be familiar to you by the end of the course. As usual, we split it up into two pieces. Okay. The direction, of course, is very important when you split it. I mean, it should be a single current source that is split. Okay. First of all, from our discussion on M0, we should know that this will not contribute anything, okay, because that is like a current source connected to the tail node of the op amp, okay. So, that argument is alone enough to eliminate that part, but we can also keep that in the analysis and do a complete analysis as well, okay. So, what will be the incremental current flowing here? So, first of all, the lower current source, the, third, the one that is connected to the tail node will cause I n 1 by 2 here and also I n 1 by 2 here. It will split equally. Okay. Now, at this node you have I n 1 flowing out and I n 1 by 2 flowing in. Okay. Is this part clear? Here? here at this node. So, here we have I n 1 by 2 flowing downwards. Okay. And in this point, part we have I n 1 by 2 flowing upwards. That goes through the cascode transistor M 6. And here we end up with 
I am one by two. So one thing I forgot to mention is that it's generally safe to neglect GDS when you analyze the circuit for noise. Let's assume that GDS is zero and go with the analysis. Okay, that will simplify the expressions and the accuracy is not sacrificed too much. And because of the current mirror, we have this I n one by two being mirrored here. Okay. The question is, why is the drain current of M5 I n one by two? Because uh, the, there is a current source connected to the tail that causes I n one by two flowing up in each of the transistors, and from this node the other source is drawing I n one. Okay. So if you apply KCL at this particular node, you will see that it's I n one by two. So what is I out? I n one. So this again very similar to the differential pair. All the noise current from transistor M1 flows to the output. So now let me do this. This is I n two. So what will be the current here and here? What is the current in this part, the right branch? I n one by two. Actually, we can use analysis exactly the same as before and find that it will be I n two by two. Okay. So this is a current source going to ground, and this is a current source flowing up from ground of the same value. Now the lower one will split into two equal parts. Okay. And this is drawing a current I n two, so this will be I n two by two. And on this side, we'll have a current flowing upwards, incremental current flowing upwards of I n two by two. Okay, which through the mirror will become I n two by two. Okay. So you just keep track of all the currents, especially with GDS reduced to zero. The current mirror is ideal. The cascode is ideal. All of these things are true. Okay, so you can quickly write down the result. So what is the current contribution of M2? Minus I N2. Okay. Now M3. What happens because of this? Where will this I N3 flow? So will I N3 flow into M3 or into M7 or split somewhere into both of them? So we can try and solve this. So the problem we are trying to solve is something like this. Okay, this is biased at a fixed voltage, and here we have a current source. Okay, I am drawing everything with N MOS. Okay, now what I want to find out is, let's say this is equivalent to M3 and this is M7. Okay. Now I add an incremental current to the source of M7 or the drain of M3. What really happens? Can it flow into M7 or M3 or split somewhere? That's the question. Okay. Muthu is very confident that all of it goes into M3. Is everyone convinced of it? Why? What's the reason? See, Kirchhoff's current law has to be valid here, and we are doing DC analysis, so no current flows into the gate. So this is zero. Okay. So into M7, the increment is zero. This has to be equal to I naught, the bias current. There can be no change from that. Okay. Unless you include GDS, there is no change from it. So this is. Zero increment. So now, if you have zero increment here and you push in some incremental I test, all of it has to flow into M3. Okay. So the current in this will be the bias current plus the increment that you inject. So what will be the voltage at this point? It has to be I test by GM3. Again, you don't cause the current and get the voltage, right? The gate voltage has to change somehow to get you the correct value of current. So that means that if uh, this is giving you an incremental voltage of I test, this had to have an incremental voltage of I test by GM3. 
Okay. What is the incremental voltage at this point? What is the incremental voltage at the source of M7? See, M7's current cannot change. So, its VGS again is exactly fixed. Okay. There can be no increment in the VGS. And the gate is fixed. So, the source is also fixed at 0 increment. Okay. Does it make sense now that this voltage has 0 increment and this has a non-zero increment? So, this voltage Vd7 and this voltage Vs7 have to be related by the gain of the common gate amplifier, right? If I just look at M7, okay, if I have an increment Vs7 here, this has to be the gain of the common gate amplifier times Vs7. So, does it make sense? What is the gain of the common gate amplifier in this case? In this case, it is infinite because its GDS is 0. Okay, so, this is an ideal feedback loop where you can think of this as the virtual ground node. Okay, so, the increment here is 0 and the increment here is something. Okay, does it make sense? So, first you recognize that the current through M7 cannot change because this is an ideal current source. Okay, that means that current cannot change means incremental current is 0. So, all of the incremental input has to flow into M3 and the result of that is an incremental voltage at the gate of M3. So, now let us say I take this gate voltage and connect it to another identical transistor M4. What will be the incremental current here? I test. It will have a bias of I naught and an increment of I test. Okay. So, from this source which is connected to the drain of M3 to this output it is also a current mirror. Okay. So, what does it mean now for this current? What will be that current? It will be I N 3. Okay. With the sign I have taken, it is plus I N 3. Okay. It is flowing out of the drain here and it will flow out of the drain there. The assumption of GDS being 0 considerably simplifies the analysis, but it is reasonable also. Even if you include GDS, you will have something like G M by G M plus GDS multiplying this instead of 1. Okay. So, the current mirroring will not be exact, but it will be of the form G M divided by G M plus G D S, which is very close to 1 anyway. Okay. This goes through the cascode M8 and goes directly to the output. So, you break down the circuit into multiple parts like we have the we have the cascode active load. From that, we can calculate the noise contributions of M3 and M4 and also M7 and M8. Okay. So, you analyze the mirror separately and then you will get the answer for what noise is contributed by these four transistors, the upper four transistors. Okay. And to that you can add your knowledge of the differential pair which we have analyzed separately. Okay. So, the rest of the stuff should be quick. IN4, what is the output noise current because of IN4? Minus IN4. So, this is connected to the cascode node of M8. Okay. So, it appears directly from the output. Okay. Now, looking into M8, you have a conductance of GM, GM8. That is because the drain of M8 is connected to an incremental short circuit. So, it is simply like connecting IN4 through a cascode to the output. Okay. So far, the results are exactly same as that of the differential pair M1, M2, M3, M4. All of them contribute their entire noise currents to the output. Okay. Now we can look at the contribution of the extra transistors. Let's look at M8 first because it's relatively simple. What's the contribution of M8? What will be the contribution? What is the noise contribution from the upper transistors in the cascode? 
Let's say we have a cascode current source which is delivering current to a voltage source. Okay. We have noise from this and the noise from this. This is noise from the cascode, this is the noise from the lower source. What is the contribution of cascode to this? What did you get it to be? It hardly contributes to the output noise. Okay. In reality, you will get something like INC. Something like this. Whereas the lower one will get multiplied by. Okay. So, if GDS is 0, then all of IN0 will flow to the output and none of INC will flow to the output. Okay. We can also analyze it by splitting the source. In fact, we can do it right in the op amp. Okay, what is the impedance looking up here? One over GM8. And what is the impedance looking down? It's two over GDS2. Okay, if you look at one side of a differential pair, it will be like double the resistance of each transistor. Okay, so here it is one over GM8, and here it is. 2 by GDS 1, which we assume to be infinity now anyway, because GDS is 0. So, where will all of this lower current source flow? It will flow into M8. Okay. IN8 flows like this upwards. Now, at this node, you have IN8 going this way. Okay. So, it just circulates there. So, none of it appears at the output node. Okay. IN6, sorry, yeah, this is M6. It's IN6 and all of it circulates in M6. Okay. Is everyone convinced that the cascode transistors do not contribute current to the output? Because that's the main message here. So the result will be that all of these M7, M8 and M5, M6, none of it contributes any noise current to the output. If it needs further discussion, I'll go into it. If you need any clarifications on this, you can come to me afterwards. All of these will contribute 0. Okay. So, the total output current is I n 1 minus I n 2 plus I n 3 minus I n 4. This is the total noise current and they are currents from different transistors. So, when we compute the spectral density, we simply add them up. Okay. The output noise spectral density is the sum of the noise spectral densities. Which is okay. So these two are proportional to GM one, these two are proportional to GM three. Okay. What is the input referred noise? So, output noise divided by GM1 squared. Exactly the same answer as with the differential pair. We have this. This is because of the input differential pair and some excess noise because of the load. Okay. Any questions on this? Telescopic cascode, the noise is exactly the same as that of the differential pair. The contribution from the cascode devices is negligible. This is okay. Now that we are let's now look at the noise of the folded cascode amplifier. So what will be the noise current from the cascode transistors? Zero. I mean, it's a cascode source. You can do the analysis again. For instance, M8. I'll have a current source which is split up like this. Okay. 
Now this flows into M8 and flows back this way. Okay, none of it reaches the output node. Oh, by the way, I have to terminate the output in a in an incremental short circuit. And what is the correct bias value here? What is the bias value that I would want to use for zero? Is VGS3. I mean, here it is the nmos load, right? So there's no VDD, VGS3. So cascode MA doesn't contribute any current to the output. So similarly, none of the other cascodes contribute anything to the output. Okay. What about M1 and M2? It will be the same, okay. It has to be, see for instance when you do the signal analysis, when you apply an increment here, okay, some increments flow through this. That is GM VD by 2. Okay. Now, if you add a current to this point, it is similar to a current increment in that node. Okay. So, finally, it will flow to the output. So, we can split it and do the analysis systematically, but I will just uh, go with the answer. Again, if you have difficulty with the analysis, let me know. Okay. M1 contributes. If I out is in this direction, which way will it go? I out will be plus I1. Okay. And similarly, M2, the noise of M2 is like this. What happens to the output current? So, it will be minus IN2. Okay. What about M4? So, this flows through the cascode through the output. Okay. And what about IN3? Again, M3, M4 is a current mirror. Okay, we just saw that if you inject something into the drain of M3, it will appear on drain of M4. And that goes through the cascode and goes to the output. Okay. So, the contribution from M1 to M4 is the same as before. Is there anything that is left to be analyzed? M9 and M10. So, we have two extra transistors in the folded cascode. What will they do? So, let me take the noise of M10. What happens to the noise of M10?
What I have said, it will appear at the output. It goes through the cascode M6 and through the output node. Okay. So, this is something that is different from the telescopic cascode. The extra transistors we have for biasing also contribute noise. M10 contributes minus I N10. And what about M9? What happens to this? So, this current flows through the cascode M5, okay, and through this current mirror. So, it does get mirrored and flows out. Okay. So, M9 and M10 also contribute to the output noise. Okay. And the spectral density which is the sum of individual spectral densities will be we have GM1 and GM3 like before but also GM9. Okay. And the input referred noise is Okay. So, would you expect this to be more noisy than the telescopic cascode? Can you design it to be less noisy for the same application? If you are given the unity gain frequency and the load capacitance, you have to realize a certain GM1. Okay. So, this part will remain the same. So, if you want to design it for less noise, you have to reduce these components, which may or may not be possible. Okay. Now, the thing to notice this you have this extra factor GM9, okay. And what is the current through M9 and M10? It is in fact the sum of the current in each stage. So, the quiescent current here is I0 by 2, quiescent current here is I1. The sum of the two is supplied by M9 and M10. So, they carry more current than every other transistor that is contributing noise. So, their GM tends to be quite significant. Okay. Again, the cascode transistors do not contribute any noise, but the extra current sources we have for biasing of the folded cascode for folding the current will contribute noise and it can be significant. Okay. So, that is the summary of the noise in a folded cascode amplifier. Now, mismatch behaves exactly the same as noise. Again, I will not show the whole analysis in class now. If you need any clarifications, you can come to me afterwards. So, mismatch behaves in exactly the same way as noise. Okay. So, I will not analyze it now, but So, this is the summary of the telescopic cascode op amp and everything that you see here is very similar to that of the differential pair. Okay. Except that of course, the DC gain is higher. That is the reason we came to the telescopic cascode topology in the first place. Okay. And we have additional uh, poles and zeros. Now, the input referred noise we analyze now and also the offset will behave similarly. Okay. We have the variance of the input, we have the contribution from the input mismatch, input pair mismatch and the contribution from the load mismatch is scaled down by GM1 by GM3 squared. Okay. And there is some swing etcetera. If you look at the folded cascode, we have the extra term GM9 by GM1 and also the mismatch in that appears in the picture as well. Okay. 
because if you have mismatch between these two transistors that will cause a mismatch current in the output okay so then you have to apply certain input increment to make the output zero that is the input referred offset okay so m9 and m10 contribute both noise and uh, offset so usually noise and offset go together okay so what do you see here also so you see the input pair offset and gm3 by gm1 square times the load offset this is the current mirror load okay and this is the contribution from the uh, source that is used for folding okay so the noise analysis is clear mismatch analysis again you can try so once you do it you will become familiar with uh, this type of small signal analysis okay now the one thing that was left out was the slew rate now i terminate the telescopic cascode with a capacitance cl okay what i want to find out is the slew rate or oh, is there a limitation if so why what is the highest rate of change of output in the positive direction in the negative direction again the condition is very similar to that of the simple differential pair you apply a differential voltage and you have it very large in either direction okay first let's say it's very large in this direction so what happens this m2 is off okay and all of this current i not flows this way and it flows out because of the current mirror through m4 and m8 and it flows into the capacitor so the positive slew rate is plus i not by cl and in this case the negative slew rate is obviously similar the m2 is on and m1 is off okay the roles of m1 and m2 are reversed so if i apply a large voltage in this direction then the m1 is off and all of this current i not is drawn out of the load capacitor sorry you don't usually put signs in front of it okay so again the positive and negative slew rates are the same and they are equal to the tail current divided by cl so if you have an op amp it has slew rate limitations okay everything else is fine you have the right unity gain frequency and all of this but you find that it is taking too long to settle because of slewing what will you do you have designed an op amp it satisfies every spec other than slew rate huh the suggestion was to scale up the width and the bias current of the op amp what you are saying is i have this op amp and the load is connected here okay i connect another op amp in parallel okay what is the unity gain frequency of this op amp 2 gm1 by cl it has doubled okay i don't want that i want to keep the same op amp every other spec the same but i want to increase the slew rate so what will i do i mean some of the other specs may change slightly but certainly i don't want a major change like doubling the unity gain frequency to keep unity gain frequency the same i have to keep the same gm okay but slew rate is dependent only on the current so i have to increase the current okay so i have to increase the current and reduce the aspect ratio of the input transistors so that's the only way in which i'll keep the same gm but get a higher slew rate that is the same unity gain frequency and higher slew rate what's the disadvantage of this the overdrive has increased so the swing has been compromised 
Okay. Let's now evaluate the slew rate of the folded cascode amplifier. So I take a folded cascode and connect the capacitance CL. So what is the slew rate now? This bias current is I naught. Okay. And these bias currents are I1 plus I naught by 2 and I1 plus I naught by 2. Okay. So, one answer is that it is just I naught by CL and the I1 does not come into picture at all. Okay. So, let us see what happens. Let us have a large swing in this direction. Okay. What will be the current here? Huh? I naught. And what is the current here? 0. So, what is the current through M5? So, this is I1 plus I0 by 2 and this is I1. Okay. So, this current is I1 minus I0 by 2. So, can you use any value of I1 to bias the folded cascode? It has to be more than I0 by 2. So, that, that you cannot get away with a very small bias. I1 must be greater than I0 by 2. If this is the case, what is the current flowing through the output? Let us say this is the case. If I1 is less than I0 by 2, then also it will work, the op amp will work. But let us see what happens afterwards. First, let me assume that I1 is greater than I0 by 2. What will be the output current? So, this is I1 minus I0 by 2, and what is this current? Here it is 0. Okay. So, this is I1 plus. I naught by 2 and because of the bottom current mirror I will have I 1 minus I naught by 2. Okay. So, the total output current is I naught the slew rate is I naught by C L is this okay? And what happens if uh, the increment is the other way around and large, you will get minus I naught by CL to be the fastest negative rate of change. Okay. What happens if I do not satisfy this? What will be the slew rate? I mean, I want less than I naught by 2, there is no problem in quiescent condition, all of the small signal stuff will be fine. What will be the slew rate in that case? I1 plus I0 by 2 upon CL. Is that correct? The answer given was I1 plus I0 by 2, the whole thing by CL. Is that correct? Actually, when will it enter slewing in that case? When will it start slewing? Left arm of this one. Okay. And what is the current in that case? Slewing is when you have current only from one side or the other. At least you cannot increase it beyond that. Okay, so the left arm being collapsing or whatever it is, it's correct. So what is the current flowing through this in that case? When it just enters that state, okay, as when you have it in quiescent condition, everything is biased properly. As you go on increasing the uh, swing, this will keep on drawing current, and at some point, M5 will have no current. Bias current. Okay, it will just go out of bias. It will go into cutoff. This is because we didn't take care to ensure I1 greater than I0 by 2. So, what is the value of this current? Huh? I, this is I1 plus I0 by 2. And what is this current? I0 by 2 minus I1, which is not 0, right? So, the differential pair is not cut off in this case. Okay? So, what will be the output current? 2I1. Okay. So, the output current is two I one. Is this okay? See, the output stage goes into cutoff, like one part of the output stage, either the left side or the right side, at some value of current increment in the input differential pair. 
the input differential pair is not fully switched on the one side or the other okay now i evaluate what is the condition under which the left side goes into cut off for that the current in the left arm of the differential pair must be i1 plus i0 by 2 consequently the right arm will be at i0 by 2 minus i1 so that is drawn out of this part okay so the current that flows to the load is 2i1 it's not i1 plus i0 by 2 it's in fact even smaller than that okay and the same thing happens in the negative direction also so what is the skew rate okay so it will be limited by the minimum value of i0 and 2i1 what do you have to do so that uh, both stages limit simultaneously you just make that 2i1 equals i0 so the bias current flowing in all transistors should be the same that's uh, generally that's the common point chosen for the folded cascode okay you will make the quiescent current through all four arms this 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 and this the same equal to i0 by 2 okay so in generally there is no reason to make it anything else you will only get a suboptimal skew rate the question is if settling time is not an issue at all can we get away with using a small i1 and reduce the power consumption so if uh, settling is not an issue at all then maybe i'll just choose i1 to be very small okay so there are a couple of things that happen when i1 is very small the parasitic capacitance is associated with these nodes also move into lower frequencies and the skew rate becomes smaller but if that's okay with you then it's fine everything is fine okay let's prove if settling time is not an issue then there is no reason to optimize the skew rate okay the question he asked was what is an example scenario where you are not interested in settling time for instance let's say you have a voltage reference or a voltage regulator and maybe it takes like few milliseconds to start up but you don't care that's a that's the case actually so frequently in voltage regulators also settling is an, is an issue okay but we are only interested in dc and it's operating with a fixed load okay the bandwidth of the system relates to how fast it recovers from disturbances as well right so let's say it's operating always with a fixed load so if the load changes then how fast it settles depends on the bandwidth maybe even that is not an issue because it's always with a fixed load so in that case perhaps you don't care okay but in the assignment you are asked to not limit the skew rate because of one or the other so that means you choose equal currents in all four okay so any questions on any aspect of this the two stage op amp we have not discussed so you can submit it afterwards the other stuff you can do now okay now the one thing i had not mentioned explicitly earlier is what happens with body effects now frequently and in the assignment also you connect all the nmos nmos body to ground and pmos to vdd so what is the main effect because of that firstly the threshold will increase you will have effects because of that also see we have in this case we have the cascode here so this is the gain of the cascode gds5 by gm5 that's the inverse of the gain of the cascode instead of gm5 we will get gm5 plus gmb5 okay so of uh, gm5 you get these two and gm7 you get this in all the expressions that we have evaluated so far okay and also the common mode will have an additional factor because when you raise the input common mode the tail node will not raise by the same amount it will raise by a smaller amount okay so because of that the incremental current common mode current is also smaller so when you do simulations you of course follow this you tie nmos and pmos bulk terminals to vdd and ground ground and vdd respectively so then if you are comparing dc gain to what you get from analytical expressions you should take this into account okay okay that's it for today have a nice long weekend